I'm going to explain a drama thriller film called, The Good Son. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. What was meant to be an ordinary day of playing soccer becomes Mark Evans' worst when his father unexpectedly shows up with a grim look on his face. Mark immediately knows what this means. His father, Jack, takes him to the hospital to see his mother, Janice, who's lying on the bed. Janice looks frailer than ever, and she's sleeping when Mark enters the room. As Mark sits beside her, Janice asks him why he didn't wake her. Mark says that he thought she should sleep, and Janice smiles weakly, saying she'd rather see him. She asks him if Jack already told him about her condition, then tells him that she knows he'll be okay. Janice reminds Mark that she'll always be with him, but Mark refuses to accept the inevitable. He tells his mother that she won't die because he won't let her. On the day of his mother's funeral, Mark spends most of his time alone, keeping his distance from the guests and his father. Meanwhile, Jack tells his brother, Wallace, that he can't go on a business trip and leave his son. However, Wallace convinces Jack that going to Tokyo to close his deal might mean that he won't have to leave Mark again. He also reminds Jack that he's leaving his son with them and not some strangers and that it might do Mark some good to be with other kids at the moment. Finally, Jack agrees, and he says he'll take Mark to Wallace's place in Maine himself since they need to spend some time together. On his way to his brother's house, Jack tries teasing his son, but when Mark doesn't react, Jack pulls over. Though Jack acknowledges that he's hurting, he asks Mark not to shut him out, but Mark is still in denial. He insists that his mother will still come back, but Jack tells him that she won't. Still, Jack believes that she's coming back somehow, but not as herself. He tells Mark that he misses Janice, too, but he wants him to accept that his mother's gone. This only upsets Mark even more, so he rushes out of the vehicle and runs to the desert. Along the way, something must have crossed his mind, and he suddenly stops. Eventually, they reach Wallace's house, where they're greeted by Wallace and his daughter, Connie. Wallace's wife, Susan, greets them, too, commenting about how it's been 10 years since she's last seen Mark. While they talk, Connie suddenly screams, and they see her looking at her brother, Henry, playfully hanging upside down by the stairs while wearing a scary mask. Wallace tells Henry to come down, and when he does, he gives another mask to Mark, saying he made one for him so they could be brothers. During dinner, Susan informs Jack that she's spoken to Alice Davenport, a therapist who works with Wallace at the hospital. She says that the therapist agreed to talk to Mark while he's gone. As they eat, Henry playfully kicks Mark's legs under the table, and when Mark does the same, the two start laughing. Henry then shows Mark how to crack a lobster shell, and they laugh even more. With the two boys having fun, Susan quietly tells Jack that she thinks Mark will be fine, and Jack agrees. After dinner, Jack's preparing to leave when he reminds Mark that he's going to Tokyo so that he won't have to leave him again. He tells his son that it's only going to take him two weeks and asks him to have fun with his cousins during his winter break. Mark hugs his father, and Jack promises Mark they'll be together soon before finally driving away. The following day, Mark wakes to Henry shouting outside as he plays. He quickly gets dressed to join his cousin, and on his way down, he sees a child's room. He briefly goes inside to look, then closes it. Mark hurriedly goes down the stairs, and when Susan notices him, she asks if he wants to have some breakfast first. Susan tells him that they're happy he's staying with them, and when Henry calls out to him, Susan finally lets him go. Henry takes Mark to his treehouse, and Connie watches from the ground as the two boys make their way up the tree. Henry reaches the top first, and when Mark's about to reach it too, he asks Henry to help him up. While Henry tries pulling him up, the branch that Mark is stepping on suddenly snaps, and Mark helplessly dangles from the tree. With Henry holding on to him, he asks Mark if he thinks he could fly if he lets him go. Mark doesn't answer, and he just continues to ask for help. When Henry finally manages to pull him all the way inside the treehouse, they lie down breathlessly and start goofing around. The boys play inside an abandoned factory, where they start breaking the windows, but the caretaker suddenly chases them away. The two end up in a cemetery, and there, they find a well. Henry uses it as his hiding place for his cigarettes, and when he lights and smokes one, he makes Mark try it. Though Mark says that cigarettes cause cancer, Henry dismisses him, asking who cares since they'll die anyway. As Mark takes a puff and starts coughing, Henry asks him if he saw his mother after she was dead. When Mark says he wasn't allowed to, Henry says that he should have insisted. People don't like talking about the dead, so it's up to them to investigate. Henry then asks Mark what his mother looked like the last time he saw her, and after Mark describes her, Henry says he took a real good look at his little brother when he drowned in their bathtub. The news surprises Mark, and Henry continues to describe his brother, saying he was completely blue. Henry also tells Mark that he should have looked at his mother's eyes and lips and touched her skin to see if she's hot or cold. This makes Mark mad, and he demands Henry to stop talking about his mother, but Henry reasons that he's just trying to be scientific. Again, Mark tells Henry to shut up, threatening to hit him if he doesn't. Henry dares him to try, and as Henry throws his cigarette down the well, he says he'll throw Mark down there, too. Mark looks down the well but doesn't get scared, then Henry apologizes for everything, saying he knows how he'd feel if he didn't have a mother. Finally, the two boys make up by shaking hands. While Mark and Henry are walking by the dock the following morning, a dog suddenly chases them, forcing them to run like they've never run before. As they reach the bridge's end, Henry manages to close the door on the dog, leaving the animal mad and barking. Instead of just leaving, Henry taunts the dog by barking back at it, making Mark agitated. 
Mark pulls his cousin away from the dog and tells him they need to go, and before they do, Henry states he loves that dog. The boys go to a cliff overlooking the sea, and on the other side of the cliff stands Susan, staring into the waters. According to Henry, Susan always goes there to think about her late son, Richard, and he comments that it's a little weird. He then invites Mark to his shed to show him his new invention. Once Mark sees it, he asks Henry what exactly it does. Instead of just describing it, Henry takes his makeshift crossbow outside and aims it at a cat. Mark loads it with a bolt and reminds Henry to just scare the cat, not hit it. Henry agrees, and when he shoots, he misses the animal only by a few inches. The boys run to where the bolt hits a tree, and Mark stands there completely amazed while Henry looks disappointed that he didn't kill the little feline. One day, Mark goes to see Alice Davenport, the therapist that Susan mentioned. Though Mark is unwilling to talk at first, he ends up confessing that he blames himself for his mother's death, saying he broke his promise to her and let her die. While Mark tosses and turns in his bed that night, he hears a sound from the corridor and sees a woman in white, walking. Thinking it's his mother, Mark follows the woman downstairs as she makes her way to the living area. When Mark calls out to her, she turns around, and Mark realizes that it's Susan. Disappointed and confused, Mark sits on the stairs, and Susan asks him what's wrong, but Mark only looks at her, saying she came back and that he knew she'd come back. Though Susan's unsure of what he's saying, she hugs and comforts Mark as he cries, promising that she's right there with him. While Mark tells Susan that he misses his mother, Henry quietly watches them from upstairs. As Mark and Connie play, Henry calls Mark and tells him it's time to go outside, and when Connie tries to join them, Henry pushes his sister away. The boys go outside with Henry's makeshift crossbow, looking for any target they can hit. When Henry spots the dog that chased them the other day, he shoots it, shocking Mark when he hit the poor animal. As the dog whimpers, Henry tells Mark that he's only scaring the dog. They then bring the dead dog to the cemetery and drop it in the well. Once the dog is gone, Henry starts humming a song, and Mark leaves him while feeling disgusted. As Mark looks at the photos in the living area, he sees one picture of his mother carrying him as a child. Susan arrives and joins him, and when Mark sees a photo of Richard, he says she probably misses him. When Susan says she does, Henry shows up and invites Mark to his shed, saying he has something to show him. Mark is reluctant to go, but Susan tells him to join Henry. On their way to Henry's shed, Henry apologizes to Mark about the dog, but Mark ignores him. In the shed, Henry shows Mark the dummy he made, and he calls it Mr. Highway. Mark asks Henry what he plans to do with it, but Henry gives him vague answers, saying it all depends on whether Mark will help him or not. With Mark's help, Henry takes the dummy outside and suddenly throws it off a bridge, causing a massive road accident. Henry watches with pleasure as the cars crash into each other, while Mark can only watch in horror. Afterward, the boys rush away from the scene and into a tunnel to hide from the cops. There, Mark gets upset and tells Henry that he could have killed people, but Henry nonchalantly replies that he did it with his help. Surprised, Mark tells Henry he didn't know he was going to throw the dummy off the bridge, and Henry only replies that he feels sorry for Mark because he doesn't know how to have fun. Henry continues to tell his cousin that one can be free and fly once he realizes he can do anything. He advises that Mark shouldn't be afraid to fly, but Mark just stares at him, saying that he's sick. That night, Mark listens to the news as the news anchor reports the car accident. He's about to go into Wallace's office to tell him what happened, but Henry taunts him, implying that his father will believe him over Mark. Insisting that they should do it together, Henry suddenly pushes the door to his father's office open while he tries to bring Mark inside with him. Mark manages to run upstairs, and when Wallace asks what's wrong with him, Henry comments that Mark has been acting weird. In the room that he shares with Mark, Henry asks his cousin if he's okay, but Mark only tells him to leave him alone. Connie then enters the room to inform them that Susan's letting them go skating the following day. Still, this upsets Henry, and he asks her what he said about coming to his room. When Connie doesn't answer, he pinches her ear as he tells her she's not allowed in his room, making the little girl cry. Mark breaks them apart and pins Henry, saying that Connie can stay. The boys start fighting and pulling each other's hair, and while Connie calls for help, Henry asks Mark if he'd be sad if something were to happen to Connie. Ominously, Henry remarks that accidents happen, and tells Mark to ask his mother about Richard. When Susan enters the room, Henry tells her that they are just playing a dumb game, and with Mark backing him up, Susan believes them and leaves. The following day, Alice finds Mark in the playground while watching Connie play. Alice says he must have forgotten about their appointment, but Mark tells her that he just doesn't feel like talking. He then asks the therapist what makes people evil, but Alice says evil is just a word people use when they get tired of trying to understand someone, and that there's a reason for everything. Alice then asks Mark if he thinks he's evil because he let his mother die, but Mark doesn't answer her question. Instead, Mark asks her if a boy is considered to be evil if he does terrible things just because he likes them. When Alice says she doesn't believe in evil, Mark tells her she should, before going to Connie. During dinner, Wallace tells the boys to babysit Connie since he's taking Susan out to dinner. After that, Henry tells his mother that Mark wants to move into Richard's room since he seems to like it there. Mark tries denying it, but the adults can't hear him because they're already arguing whether Mark should transfer to their little boy's room or not. Wallace insists that it might be a good idea if Mark stays there, but Susan is adamant that she isn't ready for that to happen yet. Wallace asks her to give it some thought, but Susan is determined to leave Richard's room as it is. Henry smirks as he watches his parents argue, while Mark keeps trying to tell them that Henry is making it up. 
Finally upset, Susan leaves the table, which satisfies Henry. He happily watches his mother cry in Richard's room that night. When Susan notices him, Henry walks up to her and comforts her, telling her not to cry. As Susan and Wallace go to the restaurant, the kids turn off all the lights in the house to play hide and seek. Connie hides while the boys try to find her, but Henry finds her first. When Mark hears Connie screams, he immediately rushes to follow her voice and finds Henry on top of her, tickling her. Feeling uncomfortable, Mark offers to read Connie a story instead of playing hide and seek, and she agrees. After reading her a story, Mark sleeps in Connie's room to guard her against Henry. The following morning, Mark wakes up and finds Connie's bed empty, and as he goes down, he hears Susan and Wallace talking about Richard. Susan still blames herself for what happened to her son, saying she left him in the tub with less than six inches of water to answer the phone. Seeing that his wife is upset, Wallace offers to drive Connie to the Andersons, but Susan tells him that Connie went skating with Henry in Miller's Pond. Upon hearing this, Mark wastes no time going to the said pond. The pond is filled with people, and as soon as Mark spots the siblings, he goes into the frozen pond even with no skates on. Mark keeps slipping and bumping into people as he runs on ice, but he never stops moving. Henry then takes Connie to the restricted part of the pond and pushes her toward thin ice. As soon as Connie stands, the ice breaks and she falls in. Everyone gathers around the siblings and watches while Henry pretends to help his sister. Some people in the crowd keep Mark from helping Connie, so he's forced to stay there behind the line. Henry then extends his hand to Connie, who is struggling to keep afloat, and every time Connie touches his hand, Henry pulls it away. Finally, Connie starts sinking, and only then did two men decide to step in and break a small portion of the ice to save the little girl, all while Henry calmly watches from the side. Upon hearing the news, Susan immediately goes to the hospital, and she is greeted by Wallace, who assures her that their daughter is fine. After Connie's accident, Mark finds Susan by the cliff and tells her that Henry pushed Connie toward the thin ice. He says that Henry has stated that he hates Connie, and that Henry tried killing her. He even warns Susan that Henry could do it again. This only upsets Susan, and she slaps Mark, insisting that he's lying. Susan asserts that she loves Henry and asks Mark never to come to her with his lies again. That night at the hospital, Henry enters Connie's room, and as he watches her sleep, he slowly tries to get one of her pillows. Susan then turns on the light, startling Henry. He says he's worried about his sister, and Susan tells him that Connie probably won't remember what happened on the ice. When she asks her son what really happened, Henry insists that it was an accident. Later, Mark talks to his father on the phone and tells him what Henry did to their neighbor's dog and Connie, saying Henry tried to kill her. Shocked by his son's accusations, Jack asks for Susan or Wallace, and Mark tells him that they won't believe him. Jack then asks his son to see his therapist and tell her what he just told him, and Mark agrees. Mark goes to Alice's house, where he finds Henry talking to her. Alice says Henry told her that the two of them are having problems, and Mark gets mad, asserting that Henry is the problem. Thinking that Alice is siding with Henry, Mark immediately leaves. Henry then starts making up stories about Mark, saying his cousin scares him sometimes, and she expresses her desire to know what he means. After his session with Alice, Henry finds Mark in the treehouse and taunts him. Mark tells Henry that everyone will soon learn the truth about him, especially after he told Susan what Henry did. Henry says that his mother will believe him over Mark, but Mark tells him that Susan is his mother, too, saying that his own mother chose Susan as a way of coming back. Unhappy, Henry warns Mark not to mess with him while Mark climbs down the tree. That night, Mark goes to the kitchen to look for some food and finds Henry standing there, subtly hinting that he's poisoned all the food in the refrigerator. Henry then calls his parents, and as they go to the kitchen, they find Mark dumping all their food in the sink, claiming that Henry is trying to poison them. Susan tries to calm him down, and when he finally does, Wallace takes him to Richard's room. The next day, Susan goes to Henry's shed, where she accidentally finds Richard's rubber duck hidden in one of Henry's masks. Henry suddenly arrives, and when Susan shows him the rubber duck, Henry says it was his before it became Richard's. Susan asks Henry why he took it, adding that she was looking for it after the accident, and Henry innocently replies that he just wants to have something to remember Richard by. When Henry asks for the toy back, Susan refuses, which upsets Henry. Henry then tries grabbing it away from his mother, and when he finally manages to get it, he runs away and goes to the cemetery, where he drops the duck into the well. Later on, as Mark finds Henry watching himself in the mirror, Henry hints that he plans to hurt his mother. Mark threatens to kill him first, and when Henry mocks him, Mark grabs a pair of scissors and jumps Henry before placing the scissor against his throat. As Henry dares Mark to slit him, Wallace suddenly enters the room and gets Mark off his son, saying he could actually hurt Henry. Wallace takes Mark downstairs and tells him that he'll call Alice. Mark tries fleeing, but Wallace immediately catches him and locks him up in the study room. From the window, Mark watches as Henry lures Susan into the woods. Left with no other options, Mark breaks the window. Wallace almost catches him, but Mark manages to escape through the door. In the woods, Susan asks Henry what really happened the night Richard died, and Henry claims that he was playing downstairs. Susan doesn't believe him, and when she asks Henry if he killed Richard, Henry looks her straight in the eyes and asks what she would do if he did. This takes Susan aback, but she says they'll get help and asks her son to trust her, but Henry says he can't. He then starts backing away, saying he'd rather die than be sent away. Henry then runs, and when Susan goes after him and reaches the cliff, Henry appears behind her. 
He pushes his mother off the cliff, but Susan manages to grab a branch sticking out of the cliff. When Henry is about to drop a huge rock on her, Mark arrives and tackles him. As the boys struggle, Susan slowly pulls herself up. She eventually reaches the top, and there, she sees the boys rolling over the cliff. Susan grabs Henry and Mark by their hands, and as Henry holds her hand with both of his, Mark starts to slip. Henry keeps begging his mother to save him, but with no strength left, Susan lets go of him to save Mark. Henry falls to his death while Susan hugs her nephew. Later on, Mark reflects on their accident, wondering whether Susan will make the same choice if she has to do it over. Although he'll always wonder, Mark is sure that he will never ask Susan about it. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.